The good old team and contributors have been hard at work and good old 4.3 is here packed with incredible features. I'll share with you my six favorite features that you should not miss. For the full list, check out the post, link in the description. 4.3 introduces three nodes for interactive music, audio stream interact, audio stream playlist, and audio stream synchronized. The goal is to provide more flexibility when it comes to music without having to integrate specific software such as F mode or Wise. I'm excited for these because they'll allow more people to have access to cool music features. It's always easier to onboard people when the features are built in Godot. So what can you do with that? Audio stream playlist is the easiest to demonstrate and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You put multiple streams and they'll be played like a playlist. You can configure it to loop, shuffle and even cooler to have an automatic fade between music. So cool. You can also query the BPM of the current song playing, which is useful to modify some effects or even synchronize things. Speaking of synchronization, the audio stream synchronized allows you to play multiple songs in sync. You assign the streams you want, hit play, and boom, it plays in sync. Easy to use and incredibly useful. Audio Stream Interact is the last thing you need to truly make interactive music. You can see it as an animation tree, but for music. You define the streams and the transition table between the streams and it lets you smoothly transition from one stream to another. This can be used to transition from a day to night music or ambient to combat track for example. Of course this is somewhat limited compared to F mode and others, but it's a great step in the right direction and I think it could be enough for a lot of devs. Give it a try and let us know what you think. Quick note, this feature is flagged as experimental, so it can change in the future. This is a new node to replace both the parallax background and the parallax layer. It should be easier to use, have less limitations and even new features. Let's see what's up. The new node is easier to set up, as it's just one node. It can follow the camera rotation, but also support zooming out with a camera. It has built-in auto-scroll and better performance. Finally, it's now compatible with canvas group and back buffer copy, as it's just a node 2D. It means you can more easily apply shaders to your parallax. This will be super Super useful for those of you shader wizards. Overall, I really like this new direction. It feels less clunky and more powerful. Just having to use one node is pretty cool in itself. Read the blog post for more details about it. A problem have been plaguing Godot for a while and it's now finally fixed. You won't be stuck anymore when your scenes are invalid or corrupt. Godot 4.3 will allow you to open, edit and fix the scenes in an attempt to fix the missing dependencies. You refactor freaks will love that and won't be afraid of moving things around anymore. While this is not a very sexy feature, it's super useful when you use Godot a lot. This means you should not have to fix your scene outside of Godot. Yay! Direct3D12 is now an optional rendering backend for Godot on Windows. This is pretty cool and it shows that Godot is flexible enough so that the renderer can be swapped for another one. It's been the case with physics and G extensions and people loved it. So I'm really excited for such a feature. If I'm not mistaken, this is also needed to port on Xbox, but also on Windows Store, Windows on ARM and GDK. So that's really cool. Because Microsoft open sourced a key component of Direct3D, Godot is now able to ship directly with Direct3D. No need to place a proper your DLL yourself, so you can try it right now if you want. Incredibly cool. Thanks to my Patreons on Patreon for making this video possible. If you want to support me and get access to content like this early, but also exclusive content, join us on patreon.com slash mrelliptic. Thanks! Single-threaded exports are here. You don't know what it means? Well, to make it quick and simple, it means broader support on all browsers without having to enable experimental features. Web is an important platform for game jams, but not only that, it's becoming more and more used and even platforms like Discords are now investing in it. It's essential for Godot to be able to export to web seamlessly, so this is very exciting. Without going into too much details, the Godot team at some point made the decision to go in one direction for the web, which was to use multiple threads. Unfortunately, this feature has not been used by a lot of browsers, which means that your support is pretty limited. This is why you have to tick shared buffered array when you want to publish a game on itch, for example. So going back to a single threaded mode allows a browser support, but of course it comes at a cost. Most notably, it makes sound an issue as it's running on the same thread as the whole game. If you want to go further on this subject, there's a more in-depth article on the Godot's blog. I really recommend it. 
The title is self-explanatory, right? The compatibility renderer targeting OpenGL 3.3, OpenGL ES 3.0, and WebGL 2 is now considered feature complete compared to Vulkan. MSAA, resolution scaling, glow, finally, reflection probes, light map GI, adjustments, and color correction. This is good news for people wanting to use Godot 4 with older devices. While Vulkan has been out for a while now, vendors are not necessarily great at supporting the latest API and even just supporting them correctly. And if you're targeting older devices, they might not support Vulkan at all. OpenGL 3 is still very capable, useful, and widespread. This means Godot can run on more devices. Yay! This new feature is incredibly cool, but also pretty advanced. I'm going to try my best to explain it and why it's so useful. First of all, note this is only available for 3D. Sorry to defaults. The compositor allows you to create a custom compositor effects, and this allows you to have control over the rendering pipeline. I won't go into the details, but the rendering pipeline is basically all the steps needed to go from your 3D scene to a pixel render on your screen. Having access to the render pipeline allows you to manipulate the steps and create effects that would otherwise not be possible by accessing information before it's fully processed. With normal post-processing, all the rendering steps are done and you manipulate the final result that would be shown to the user. With the hooks, you're able to access different stages of the rendering, for example, allowing you to do special operations before the lighting or accessing things that are otherwise inaccessible, such as the depth buffer. But what kind of effects? In the Godot documentation, they showcase a post-processing effect with a screen shader. It's not a more advanced example, but it's a great way to showcase how to put this system in place. So what could be another effect? This data Data moshing delayed render is a great example, I believe. Quoting directly from Redmser, the creator, in a nutshell, I take a screenshot of the game and move each pixel by however much it would have moved due to the camera movement distance from the camera, etc. So most of the frames you see aren't up-to-date renders, but instead show a successively more and more morphed variant of a previous frame. And this seems to be made by the compositor effect. Quoting again, I always wanted to learn how to emulate the artifacts of a faulty video decoding in shaders. Now with compositor effect, it's possible in Godot. There's also another example from Bastions about radial sun rays. You can check it out, link in the description. To sum up, from what I understand, right now we have the compositor effect, which is quite low level. It allows people to hook themselves at different passes and use compute shader to do stuff. In the future, we'll have a rendering compositor, which will be more limited but also easier to use. If you want to understand more, there's a discussion below on GitHub. And if you have a good example of what can be made with such a feature, please tell me in the comments below. Those were my favorite features, but there's still a lot of things to talk about. Let's go over the cool features but in less details. Physics interpolation has been added from 3.6 for 2D only right now. 3D is coming later. If you want to learn more about it, there's a good explanation in the Godot's docs. Layers were a cool introduction, but a bit clunky to edit. Now they're separate nodes, so it should make them easier to work with. It's the kind of change that requires some getting used to, and then you wonder how you manage without it. The file system doc can now be moved at the bottom of Godot, Unity and Unreal style. The project manager also got some love to make it look better. Small changes, but very much appreciated. Speaking of small changes, there's now a way to check if a new version of Godot is available in the project manager. This feature is disabled by default. Skeleton Modifier 3D is a new way to add modifications to a skeleton. It could be IK or Lookat, for example. No official modification will be implemented in 4.3, but add-on devs will be able to make their own. Pretty cool. There are plenty of other changes in the animation player, XR features, C Sharp, and GDScript, but I'll let you discover them. Thanks to the Godot team and contributors for their work. Don't hesitate to support them financially if you can. That's it for me. Let me know what's your favorite Godot 4.3 feature. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.